1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, in the Amplified Classic Version. But the Holy Spirit distinctly and expressly declares that in latter times some will turn away from the faith, giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach. Through the hypocrisy and pretensions of liars whose consciousness are seared, who are cauterized, who forbid people to marry and teach them to abstain from certain types of food which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and have increasingly clear knowledge of the truth. Verse 4. For everything God has created is good, and nothing is to be thrown away or refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is hallowed and consecrated by the word of God and by prayer. Verse 6. If you lay all these instructions before the brethren, you will be a worthy steward and a good minister of Jesus Christ, ever nourishing your own self on the, tr the truths of the faith and of good Christian instruction, which you have closely followed. Verse 7. But refuse and avoid irrelevant legends, profane and pure and godless uh, fictions, mere grandmother's tales, and silly myths, and express your disapproval of them. Train yourself towards godliness, piety, keeping yourself spiritually fit. Verse 8. For physical training is of some value, useful for a little, but godliness, spiritual training, is useful and in value for everything and in every way. For it holds promise of the present life and also for the life which is to come. Verse 9. This saying is reliable and worthy of complete acceptance by everybody. With a view to this, we toil and strive. Yes, we suffer reproach because we have fixed our hope on the living God, who is the Savior, the Preserver, the Deliverer of all men, especially those who believe, trust in, rely on, and adhere to him. Okay, verse 11. Continue to command these things and teach them. Let no one despise or think less of you because of your youth. But be an example, a pattern for the believers in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Till I come, devote yourself to public and private reading, to exhortation, that's preaching and personal appeals, and to do teaching and instilling doctrine. Verse 14. Do not neglect the gift which is in you, that special inward endowment, which was directly imparted to you by the Holy Spirit by prophetic utterance when the elders lay their hands upon you. Practice and cultivate and meditate upon these duties. Throw yourself wholly into them so that your progress may be evident to everybody. Look well to yourself, to your own personality, and to your teaching. Persevere in these things. Hold, them, hold to them. For by doing so, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. 1 Timothy 5, verse 1. Do not sharp, sharply censor or rebuke an older man, but entreat and plead with him as you would with a father. Treat younger men like brothers. Treat older women like mothers and younger women like sisters in all purity. Always treat with good consideration and give aid to those who are truly widowed. They are solitary and without support. But if a widow has children or grandchildren, see to it that these first are made to understand that it is their religious duty, their natural obligation to those at home, and make return to their parents or their grandparents for all their care by contributing to their maintenance, for this is acceptable in the sight of God. Verse 5, now a woman who is a real widow is left entirely alone and desolate and fixed her hope on God 
and perseveres in supplications and prayers at night and day. Whereas she who lives in pleasure and self-gratification, giving herself to luxury and self-indulgence, is dead even while she still lives. Verse 7. Charge the people thus, so they may be without reproach and blameless. If anyone fails to provide for his relatives, and especially those of his own family, he has disowned the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Verse 9. Let no one be put on the roll of widows who are to receive church support, who is under 60 years of age and who has been a wife of more than one man. She must have a reputation for good deeds as one who has brought up children, who has practiced hospitality to strangers of the brotherhood, hospitality to other Christians, who has washed the feet of saints, meaning has supported God's church, helped to relieve the distressed, and devoted herself diligently to doing good in every way. Verse 11, but refuse to enroll in this list the younger widows, for when they become restive and their natural desires grow strong, they withdraw themselves against Christ and wish to marry again. And so they incur condemnation for having set aside and slighted their previous pledge. Verse 13, moreover, as they go about from house to house, they learn to be idlers, and not only idlers, but gossips and busybodies, saying what they should not say and talking of things they should not mention. So I would have your younger widows marry, bear children, guide the household, and not give opponents of faith occasion for slander or reproach. For already some widows have turned aside after Satan. If any believing man or woman has relatives or persons in the household who are widows, let him, let him or them relieve them. Let the church not be burdened with them so that it may be free to assist those who are truly widows, who are alone and dependent. Verse 17, let the elders who perform the duties of their office well be considered doubly worth of honor, of adequate financial support, especially those who labor faithfully in preaching and teaching. For the scripture, scripture says, you shall not mu muzzle an ox when it is treading out the grain, and a labor is worth his hire. Verse 19, listen to no accusation against an elder unless it is confirmed by the testimony of two or three witnesses. For those who are guilty and persist in sin, rebuke and admonish them in the presence of all, so the rest may be warned and stand in wholesome awe and fear. 21. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and Jesus Christ and of the chosen angels that you guard and keep these rules without personal prejudice or favor, doing nothing from partiality. 22. Do not be in a hurry in the laying on of hands giving the sanction of the church too hastily in reinstating expelling, expelled offenders or in ordination in questionable cases. Nor share or participate in another man's sins. Keep yourself pure. Verse 23. Drink water no longer exclusively but use a little wine for the sake of your stomach and your frequent illnesses. Verse 24, the sins of some men are conspicuous, openly evident to all eyes, going before them to the judgment seat and proclaiming their sentence in advance. But the sins of others appear later, following the offender to the bar of judgment and coming into view there. Also so, good deeds are evident and conspicuous, even when they are not. They cannot remain hidden indefinitely. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. Let all who are under the yoke as a bondservant esteem their own personal masters worthy of honor and the fullest respect, so that the name of God and the teaching about him may not be brought into disrepute and blasphemy. 
Let those who have believing masters not be disrespectful or scornful to them on the grounds that they are brothers in Christ. Rather, they would serve them all the better because those who benefit by their kindly service are believers and beloved. Teach and urge these duties. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not assent to the sound and wholesome messages of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and the teaching which is in agreement with godliness, piety towards God, he is puffed up with pride, stupefied with conceit, although he is woefully ignorant. He has morbid, a morbid fondness for controversy and disputes and strife about words, which result and produce envy, jealousy, quarrels, and dissension, abuse and insults and slander and base suspicions, and protracted wranglings and wearing discussions and perpetual fiction, uh, friction among the men who are corrupt in mind and bereft of the truth, who imagine that godliness or righteousness is a source of profit, money-making business a mean of livelihood, from such withdraw. Verse 6. And it is indeed a source of immense profit. For godliness accompanied with contentment. That co contentment which is a sense of inward sufficiency. Is great and abundant gain. For we brought nothing into the world. And obviously we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we shall be content. Verse 9. But those who crave to be rich fall into temptation and snare, and into many foolish, useless, godless, and hurtful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction and miserable, miserable perishing. For the love of money is the root of all evils. It is through this craving that some have been led astray and have wandered from the faith, and pierce themselves through with many acute mental pangs. Verse 11. But as for you, O man of God, flee from all these things. Aim at and pursue righteousness, right standing with God and true godliness. Godliness, which is the loving fear of God and being Christ-like. With faith, love, steadfastness, that's patience, and gentleness of heart. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were summoned and you confessed the good confession before many witnesses. Verse 13. I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Jesus Christ who is his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession to keep the commandment unstained and free of reproach into the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ which he will display at the proper time. He who is, is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Verse 16, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be the honor and the eternal dom dominion. Amen. 17, as for the rich in this world, charge them not to be proud and arrogant and contemptuous of others, nor set their hopes on uncertain riches, but on God, who richly and ceaselessly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Charge them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be liberal and generous of heart, ready to share with others. In this way, laying up for themselves riches that endure forever as a good foundation for the future so they may grasp that which is life indeed verse 20 O timothy guard and keep the deposit entrusted to you turn away from the irreverent babble and godless chatter with the vain and empty and worldly phrases and the subtleties and the contradictions in what is falsely called knowledge and spiritual illumination. For by making such professions, some have missed the mark as regards the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen.